All right, well, my name is Terry, and I'm actually from here in Pueblo, and I'm so excited and passionate about education. One thing that fuels me is knowing that by me choosing Redkin, saying yes to becoming a Redkin educator, being a Redkin artist, and just using it every day behind the chair, that I'm invested with the highest quality of education that I get to pass on to other stylists. So I'm, I just have a lot to offer you guys today, and um, we're gonna be sharing some information. Another thing that I truly honestly believe is that the answers are all right. We're gonna learn some new techniques just using our brushes, our normal color brushes. Um, we're gonna learn how you can use multiple formulations to get a positive end result without causing damage. The world of blonding, not even in the world of everything else, but in the world of blonding, what is your nemesis? And how are you a superhero? Knowing what type of bleaches to use, because there's different ranges and with different underlying color and all of that kind of stuff. I think just determining when to use what. And maybe adding on that, knowing how long to leave them. What are final color that we want? What's your nemesis? When it comes to lightning, I mean, sometimes the underlying color can be the nemesis. You never know what's underneath. I think the evenness of from root to the end sometimes because, you know, um, you can determine but you don't know always like how well it'll lift or, but just trying to get it so that it looks even all the way through. All right, so when in doubt, swatch it out. Make sure that anytime you're starting to use a new product, today we're gonna to be talking about some specific products. If you've never had your hands in them before, take time to get some um, extension hair, some swatches, and play with the different developers, play with the different types of strokes of your brush, and see what it does. Learn what it does first before it goes on a gift. So who wants to be blonde? They say that 68%, all this research, brand new research shows 68% of our guests coming in for professional color service want to be blonde. Also, 35% of them of all color services are asking for highlights. All right, and flashlights, you can tell me, how many levels of lift can we get? So you can get eight levels of lift with flash lift, perfect. We know that with flash lift, there are two different um, ways that you can mix flash lift. What are the two different ways? The ratio of one to one, or or one to two. One being what? One in scoop or, or the developer? One scoop. One scoop of flash lift. Perfect, thank you for that. And what is the one and the two? Is it a full ounce of developer? Okay, perfect, thank you for that. I was just waiting for the answer, that's all, yep. So we know that one scoop to one ounce of flash lift of, of um, developer, there's one scoop of flash lift to two ounces of developer. Perfect. What is the timing in flash lift? Maximum of 50 minutes. We know that we use pro-oxide developer, uh, Red King's pro-oxide cream developer. What? volumes are we able to use with flash lift? Okay, so let's say on the scalp. On scalp, what can we use? So on scalp, ten, twenty, thirty. Is that what you guys said? Yes. Perfect. Off scalp? Perfect. 10, 20, 30, 40. Wonderful. Do you ever use heat with flash lift? No. no. Perfect. So let's talk about how many levels of lift there is in blonde dimensions, or there are in blonde dimensions. 
Six, perfect, thank you. There's up to six levels of lift. Now, just like we did with flash lift, what's the ratio? How do you use one dimensions? What's the ratio? One to one, perfect. And what's the timing of the one dimensions? Yeah, uh, can you repeat that please? 20 to 40 minutes. 20 to 40 minutes. What developer do we use with blonde dimensions? 10 to 40. We use 10, 20, 30, 40 of what? Yeah. Pro oxide. Perfect. Do you use heat with it? No. This is a wonderful way to get a beautiful traditional ombre look with some balayage um, accents in there without actually having to do much balayage at all. It really is just in the sectioning, the parting, and the multi-use of... The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to predetermine the top of the head. So how do we know what the top of the head is? Yeah, you put a comb flat on the head and you kind of do a little twist. That will tell you where the top curve it is right here. So we're going to go ahead and carve a little cap, a little circle, all the way around her. And we want your sections to be nice and clean. So how is how do we feel about our sectioning? 
Okay, so about that, any questions? Um, was anything a little bit more challenging than you thought it would be? Yeah, determine. And I think I think I saw that in all three of you. You were really um, learning about natural fall, and I saw some some larger caps, some smaller caps. I saw you taking some away, adding some too. Just really determining how much we want to see um, of this color, or how much, how little we want to. So don't you think you can play with that? If someone's just wanting a, a little perimeter color, can you still use the same parting, uh, the same sectioning, but um, get much different results by the um, size that you're isolating out? Yeah? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that input. Anything else? Okay, so pretty confident to move on? So yeah. dry brushing. So just like we said before, when we do a traditional um, stroke with our brush, we normally get our product, we lay it down, and we apply. In the past, what we've done is we've laid it down, we've applied, we've gone vertical, and feathered that up. Now what we're doing is we're laying it down and getting a whole different brush all by itself, making sure that it's dry, and then just taking that up a little bit. Just with the flick of our hand, just, just touching the product just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply hair color just like I normally would. Right in through here. Okay. Now, if I'm going to dry brush, I'm going to get an additional brush. I'm not going to lay it down. If I lay it down, I'm going to be taking off quite a bit. I'm just going to use the edges of my brush going in at a perpendicular motion. And I'm going to go in and, and just flick it up. Okay? So I'm going to stand directly in front of her. And if you can't see, please get to this if you can. I'm just going to take the top. And one of them, you're going to use flash lift, one to one ratio with 40 volume pro-oxide cream developer. In bowl two, you're gonna use blonde dimensions, also one to one ratio, with 20 volume pro-oxide cream. Here's the gloves here for you. So you can make sure that you're wearing gloves when you mix in. There's also a set of gloves at your station, so when we're actually doing the application, you can put on a new set. Mm -hmm. So that's just if you just want to buffer it, but if you want to pull it up more, then feel free to go from a little bit lower and, and broaden your stroke and your stroke up. Mm -hmm. So then is this going to be closer to like the, because then it's obviously not going to saturate through, right? Exactly. So, be, so underneath you're not going to see nearly as much of that. Exactly. Entering into there as on the top, right? Absolutely. And so we definitely want to take smaller sections, okay. intersections. So we can make sure that it does if we choose to. If we just want surface lightning, then we could just keep it at the top. So let's see, what, what did we learn or what were our struggles with dry brushing? Thinking that you have to really stroke it up. For me, <laughs> you'd have to like really kind of, instead of it just being a soft brushing. Sure, so perhaps the, um, the tension and the pressure that you're applying with the brush. Do you agree that if you use a heavier hand, you're gonna be dragging more of that product from the original spot on through? Where if you use a lighter hand, 
then you're going to have a lighter disbursement of that product. You may at some point want more product drug out, um, but just make sure that to remember if we're, we're using a heavier pan in the initial area, we're moving it away from where we placed it. So we may have some um, uneven tones there when we first started. When we use a lighter hand or we go a little lower and we still use that lighter hand, we may have more product bringing up, but we're not going to make those pits and bellies um, through that product disbursement. Yeah, good, great, great insight. What else, what else have we learned from this segment so far? Yeah, how, how far do you want to go? Do you want just to soften the line? If that's the case, then do like, like what we showed here, where you just start at the top and you just kind of move it. But if you want to bring that color up and soften it, uh, for more color movement, you can definitely go lower. So great, good job, awesome. And your starting point of where you lay the full color, do you want that variance in each foil? So would you want to change that up so that it doesn't have, you're not always at that same starting point? Absolutely, great question, Megan. Megan's question was, um, when we're actually going through this next segment and applying the color um, throughout, do we always want to go back to that stationary guide or are we wanting to change that up? And you know what, it's, that's going to be preference, but for this particular, particular look, we're going to change it up. So you're definitely seeing the vision and having the right questions and that's where we're going to So in our back sections, this is where we're going to start off with. This, we're going to call this section one and call this section two, okay? So in section one is where we're going to start. And we're going to bring down just a small amount of hair, and I'll show you on the mannequin before we actually get started. But just so you understand where the placement of this color is going to be. We're going to pull her first section down, okay? And we're just going to, at the very ends, apply flash lift. Formula one, in so we're going to go ahead and take section one and we're just going to take a very thin slice down, isolate the hair away. So now this is what we're dealing with. We have to determine where we want to see the color. Do we want to see the color all in the floating bottom area? Are we wanting to see it lower than that? In this particular instance, I went ahead and decided that occipital down is going to be a really good place for this lightness to live with a little bit of softness going up over the occipital. That way, she has this nice veil covering that, so no matter as that's growing out, she's still gonna have the value of that lightening for several years. Section one, we're gonna go ahead and place our foil down, knowing that we're not going to go all the way up to the top. We're just simply going to be applying flash lift for, in this intensive purposes, it's yellow, okay? Just so you can see the differences of the colors. So we're going to take flash lift just here through the bottom. So just nice, normal, color application. I'll see that. For color number two, formula number two, which is our blonde dimensions, we're going to go ahead and live up further. And this isn't separated by segments. This, I just want you to see where the color is going to live, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get formula number two Go ahead and pick up right where we left off, right above where that flash lift was, and we're going to just color just a little bit more. So now I have my blonde dimensions and my flash lift on the same strands of hair. You can see there that I have some softness. I didn't necessarily want it to be such a harsh line. So we'll kind of budge that line a little bit, but I also wanted to show you the softness here. This is where we're going to dry brush, at the top of the section. 
of the blonde dimensions. So I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm going to expose some towel. Earlier when I was listing the products and, and supplies we're going to be getting, one thing I didn't mention was your towel. So during that segment, we made sure each one of you had a towel. It's important that you have that because you're going to be actually using that to wipe off your dry brush. So it's always staying dry. Okay? All right. So we're going to take this section here. We're going to, and, and I see I don't have a whole lot of room there. So I'm not pulling all the way from down there and going all the way up because I would start painting this. So I'm just going to do that very small little flick that we showed you to begin with. So I'm going to take the top here and I'm just going to flick on up. So what we will do now is we will take section one and section two. We will start the nape of the neck with a very thin slice, put it down. Flash lift, blonde dimensions, dry brush. Next one, flash lift, blonde dimensions, dry brush, new foil. You don't, it has nothing, that, this section has nothing to do with the last one. Okay. So you do not have to keep it. There's no horizontal line to obey or anything. This is really a freedom of expression, of um, movement of light. Okay. Should you one, should you always wipe and then do it again if you're running yeah, exactly, because then this is just loading up, up and you're taking more off there. So it's best to do that and then that way you can be more specific. Yep. Okay. Um, let's hear from you guys. What was your takeaways, struggles, triumphs with doing that segment of your hands-on? Keeping your brush from going vertical. How many of you guys had struggles with that? All throughout, I heard a, a common theme that we were breaking habits, breaking habits, breaking habits. And like we said before, you know, um, to get new results, to get to an, um, a new end result, you know, which your guest is wanting, we have to break some of those methods, some of those practices. So sometimes we have to go back in and break those habits. So um, I went through, and you guys were doing a very good job. You ladies did a wonderful job in challenging that habit. And I saw you writing yourself, too. Awesome. Who else? It's exciting trying something new, and then, you know, waiting for the results to come through, and see how the flick or the, you know, works out. Mm. Awesome, yeah, it is exciting. Dry brushing, I think, changes um, changes what our eyes see. Yeah. So you're right. <laughs> Trying something new is quite exciting. Good job. I think also just like, because you're taught so much like precision, you know, so getting away from that of like wanting to be so particular, I think that's hard to break out of your mentality to be used to. Just because it's a different style that you're trying to create, so it's switching that mind frame and like letting, you know, being able to be a little more creative and free with placement and, you know, what you're wanting to see in the end. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah, just changing from that harsh precision line, you know, or A plus B plus C into some softness of organic. Working with section three and four, section three, section four, okay? So talking about section three specifically, the way we're going to work this out is we're going to pull everything forward and we're going to color that direction. So just a quick demonstration. I'm going to just place my foil here. 
So I'll lock it in, just with holding my finger. I'm only going to use one foil, I'm not going to double up my foils. So I'm going to place this here with my flash lift. Take my flash lift out to the end. There we go. And take my blonde dimensions. And I brought it back to that line where the flash lift is. Can you, everyone see this okay? Mm -hmm. Great. And I'm going to pull that in. Great. I have great saturation. Make sure my dry brush is dry. And this time, because I have more room I can travel with, I'm going to go ahead and dig a little lower in my flicking. I'm not going to do just the line. I'm going to come down and pull it up, just like that. Now I know I can go back through, wipe off my brush. Get my next section. I'm still working here. So I don't need to get that next foil out. Pull that back out. Put my flashlight, my going to my bottom dimensions. Is it important that I always adhere to those exact lines? No, I went up just a little bit higher right here than I did in the first layer underneath. Is that okay for me to have that ripple effect? In this specific one, in a shampoo and condition with a certain product that's just recently been released. So what would we follow up with a shampoo and conditioner for a blonding service? Right, thank you for that. Blonde Idol. Long idol. What chemistry shot would we be using to treat the hair since we just have it in a little bit of a fragile state to bring it back into a healthy pH? What chemistry shot? Extreme, perfect, yes, thank you. We would use an extreme chemistry shot and which fix face would we be using? What shot fix would we be using for this chemistry? 3.5, exactly. Remember, anything that you do chemically is 3.5, <coughs> mechanically is 5.5. Awesome. All right, since we're talking Blonde Idol, let's go ahead and introduce Blonde Idol really quickly. And Blonde Idol, is this beautiful, newer shampoo and conditioner made specifically for blonding. It has this awesome Paraglite system that balances the pH in the hair. It seals down the cuticle. We have some toning capacity with our conditioner and it's strengthened with lactic acid and violet leaf extract. So what it comes with is shampoo, a leave-in treatment conditioner. Have you guys ever sprayed this BBB spray? It is the most beautiful, delicious spray. You can even just put it on your, on your arm or on your hand and feel the softness that you get from that BBB spray. It's 3D, it's beautified, brightens, and balances. So it's a, yeah, go ahead. It's a beautiful product. Then we have our two tone-in conditioners, violet and gold. So basically the way these work is you have all these different dials up here. So you want to prime it, you set it to one, you prime it, and then you set it over to six and you prime it till you see the um, violet or the gold come out. Then you go back to one, make sure you're back just to your normal, very little amount of color. This class has been a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see the results of this little new technique we're learning today. Very exciting.